Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Thompson, and I have been a special education teacher for 22 years. Most recently, I've been working with students who are medically fragile, and I am finally getting to finishing my master's degree as a professional educator. And so my title and my research is all based on working with those medically fragile students. The positive health effects of participating in general education classes of interest for medically fragile students was the research that I did. The problem that many of my students have is although they are entitled to having the access to education by the Rehabilitation Act, Education for Handicapped Children Act, medically fragile students seem to have the most difficult time. Um, many teachers are not comfortable with having them in their classroom and really aren't sure what to do. It isn't, clearly it isn't out of malice. It's simply that there's a lot to be learned when working with students who are medically fragile. And what research I have found indicates that participating in school is a highlight for them and they really want to be there. What literature I did find is not very specific. School reintegration and effective approaches for students who are medically fragile just simply is almost non-existent. Um, students who are considered severely disabled and medically fragile just simply are not put in general education classrooms. The teachers, parents, administrators simply lack the knowledge as to what to do. Inclusion often looks like for my students, uh, modifying, accommodating, co-teaching, all kinds of strategies many special education teachers know. On my end, a lot of planning and acceptance for non-traditional roles of my staff as they go into classes they are not familiar with with students who have high needs. The law does require that we evaluate the health needs of these students and find a way to provide pretty much any way that we can if it's not physician required. So how do we do that? And does it have a positive impact? I think so. Right now, teachers, again, just lack knowledge and confidence to work with students with these medical needs. They need training, um, communications with outside agencies, and continued ongoing communication with myself and my staff as to what specific needs my students will have in their classrooms. So the goal of my study was to determine the positive impact of having students participate in a general education classroom. I established uh, levels of participation in a general education classroom, and then I measured attendance and I measured progress on the reading portion of their IEP goals. It boils down to students considered medically fragile who participate in a general education classroom will have improved attendance and improved progress on their reading goals related to their IEPs. That's what I was hoping to find. The variables that jump out for this are the levels of participation in those general education classrooms, and then will that affect the attendance and the achievement on reading goals for my students. The student size was very small. I had four high school students who were all considered medically fragile due to a health plan, a diagnosis. All are Caucasian, male and female. They have single and um, two parent homes. They have siblings. And then my general education teachers were elective teachers and teachers of required courses, married, single, male, female, and they range in, in experience from one to over 10 years of their specific area. This is an example of the two different um, data sheets that I used. I took a survey for the teachers that I was working with to ask about what their levels of participation might look like that my staff and my students could interpret for themselves. So we had listening and lecture, writing or note taking or seat work, verbals or discussions, conversations, physical movement and working in pairs and groups. A lot of those different things happen in a lot of these classes. I wanted to know how often it would happen in the week and how much time during the day in those classes. We are on 90 minute blocks, so there's a lot of opportunity for both of those things. And then I made an appendix for my students 
and staff that included those areas, listening, working, discussion, movement, and groups with also a familiar picture that we use, for example, on symbol sticks and news to you and things like that so that they could participate. And then my staff would oversee whether that level of participation was truly appropriate to what they did that day. Uh, so I started with the initial survey and then we recorded the levels of participation in those classrooms. Uh, I recorded attendance every day and then every week we record the achievement levels of their reading according to their IEP goals, how they're doing on their IEP goals. And I analyzed that through categories of comparisons between um, participation in classroom and attendance and goal achievement and we did this for six weeks. And here are my results. There were some correlations, although unfortunately it was less than 1%. So I don't have a direct data that shows, yes, these levels equaled an improvement in attendance and achievement. As you can see, I did have improved areas, but I can't annotate exactly or pinpoint how that occurred. So what are the implications? there just must be more research. I know it's a small population of students, but it is growing and we need more to be done. Without those studies of specific service needs and effective approaches, we're not gonna make progress for these students and it's gonna have an effect post-secondary as well as to what they can or cannot participate in in our general population and in our communities. The impact on the students and teachers. We want students to continue to participate in the general education classes because it's beneficial to their entire day. Many of my students look forward to coming in and participating in those classes and getting to be with peers. And it has a positive impact on the peers who oftentimes forget that these students are there and are working just as hard as they are, but in different ways. And teachers can learn how to have these students in their classes and actively participating, knowing that there's going to be a positive impact both in their classroom and outside of their classroom on their achievement and hopefully on their overall health. I did run into some problems. Unfortunately, when you're working with students who are medically fragile, they can become ill and that does affect the data. I did have a student who had surgery right toward the beginning of the school year and we had to adjust our time frame. And then it didn't dawn on me until afterward, students do not choose attendance, their parents and guardians do. So it is not a student choice to attend school, it's what their parents decide whether they're well enough or not, not whether the student feels they're well enough or not. I also didn't break down elective classes versus academic classes because for my students, they're pass fail, but that's probably something to look into. And other variables were the staff involvement. I have amazing staff who really try to make a difference. And I don't know if that's too much and it could have made an impact on our true data. The limitations that occurred with this was the sample size. I did only have four students. Um, there were health hazards due to being medically fragile and missing long periods of school. And like I mentioned, staff involvement for their achievement levels in reading or staff involvement in their interpretation of the participation going on in the general education classroom. The parents' decision on attendance was also a factor. And then another thing that occurred to me after the fact were classroom interruptions. Oftentimes my students have to leave the classroom because of their medically fragile situation. And so they might be missing out on participation because of that. And I did not take that into account. Uh, and then their natural student growth. My students love to come to school. They, for the most part, enjoy learning. And the question of whether they would make growth without being in a general education classroom is something that needs to be considered. So my recommendations after this, which were quick, continued research. I know this is a small group of people we're talking about, but I, like I said before, they are growing in population by law. And so staff needs to know what to do. Sample sizes could be bigger. Time frame of learning can be certainly different. More than six weeks, perhaps an entire term. 
professional development for general education teachers. After participating in this research study, I have already proposed that to our professional development committee is to take time to work with our general education teachers on how they can better integrate our students who are medically fragile, because they're all of our students, and then perhaps even research on the impact of student health on their learning goals and skills, because oftentimes their medically fragile status isn't always considered on their day-to-day -day learning as well. And while I did find references, um, there is unfortunately not a lot. As you can see, some of this is um, medical related as much as it is school related. Thank you very much.